Portion of this video is sponsored by Paperlike. So you can judge me. Shame. I spent 2,456 bucks uh, on an iPad and some accessories, and I didn't even get the expensive one. I could have bought two decently specced MacBook Airs for that, and I want to try to use it as my computer. And after four days, I was ready to just return the whole thing. Then I decided to keep it, not because it was going to replace my laptop, but it was more because of what happened when I stopped trying to make it one. I've been daily driving an 11 inch M4 iPad Pro for a year. I love that thing. It's got cellular, it's perfect for morning emails, really taking on trips. One thing it never was for me, it was never a computer. It was my like media watching thing that sat on my couch. But then the M5 iPad Pro was announced and uh, iPad OS 26 mostly kind of make this feel more like a computer. And I've been curious for a while um, about the 13 inch iPad. So I ordered the whole setup, M5 with 512 gigabytes of storage uh, with cellular, Magic Keyboard, Apple Pencil Pro. <clears throat> and my plan for testing this was simple. I was going to lock up my MacBook Air for the week and actually force myself uh, to use only the iPad. No fallback. And I figured I would try it for like a 10 day period and then like probably return the whole side of it if I didn't love it and keep my 11 inch. So day one, I set this thing up kind of how I thought it would go. I set it up like it was my MacBook Air. I paired my Logitech MX Master Mouse, opened a bunch of windows, tried to arrange them exactly how I would on my Mac. I switched it to the Windows mode. I started trying to move my workflow over and like immediately it felt like wrong. Little things kept like tripping me up. I tried to resize a window and it wouldn't quite do what I expected. The dock was disappearing when I didn't want it to. Apps felt slightly off, like they were designed for something else, which I don't know, they were, um, but I was trying to ignore that. So second day, slightly better. The learning curve is much steeper uh, than I expected. So I had to do kind of a bunch of like batch moving around of video files um, from the files app. And I do want to say, much better than it was in previous versions of iPad OS. I'm able to add new columns and rows and see file sizes, but moving around multiple things at once, this is not nearly uh, as elegant or useful as kind of a desktop finder app. So I guess bear that in mind. It's also been a bit trickier to kind of relearn keyboard shortcuts, or I guess learn what the keyboard shortcuts do here, because some are the same. Like Command Tab, I can see the list of all my open apps, but I can't quit them by pushing Q, I'm learning. There's like a much bigger learning curve than like if you use Windows going to Mac or if you use Mac going to Windows, because things like look the same kind of if you used to a Mac, but then things don't work how you'd expect them to work. But we're getting there, we're gonna persevere. All right, day three, like I think I'm starting to come out of it and like see some of the light here on how this could actually work. So the big change was going to settings and keeping it at full screen apps when I'm using it just like an iPad and then switching it into windowed apps when I have it in the keyboard. I'm gonna set a shortcut to do that automatically. That made things significantly easier and that's like a duh moment, but that helped a lot. And I kind of was making this discovery on day two, but forcing it to open pretty much every app in the web was a huge help. It actually looks like now I'm using Safari on anything. Uh, that has made this more like a portal. I had the idea that I was just gonna remote access my Mac from here and then be like, look, I'm using my iPad, but that felt like cheating. Um, I started setting it up and then I didn't do it for the sake of this video, but that would probably be a giant workaround to anybody who wants to use an iPad, but doesn't wanna use a Mac or PC, really, you can just remote access. But I ain't gonna do it. Uh, I'm also discovering sometimes when I swipe down on certain apps, there's more menu options, that's been helpful. I also rediscovered that I have shortcut keys, which are useful as well. I kind of forgot that those existed, but I was like 20% confident I was gonna make it through this it's yesterday. Today I'm like a solid 35, so that's a plus. I think I'm recording. So today's day four, uh, I came out to work outside because it's super nice here. It's been kind of raining the past couple of days. I had a big realization, and this is probably the most Captain obvious -y of all realizations. Throughout the first three and a half days, I've been using the iPad as a laptop like this, because it's how I'm used to using laptops. I got a keyboard and I got a screen, 
and I got a trackpad. And it's awesome that Apple gives you that option. You don't have to use this setup. You can pair a Bluetooth keyboard. And this setup is perfect for when you're writing and you need like a keyboard or you're doing heavy stuff that you need shortcuts for. But I had to edit a thumbnail for an upcoming video and I usually use Affinity for that. And I was trying to do it in this setup. And the Captain Obvious part is that I realized it's a freaking iPad. Like I don't have to use it in the dock. I can take it off and I can actually use it with my meat stick and move around. And this is how the iPad was designed to be used. And I started thinking, well, if I can work on my photos like this a lot easier, maybe I can do some other stuff like this too. So things that I was so reliant on a keyboard trackpad that weren't like typing intensive, I started using off the dock. Sitting out here, sitting on the couch, sitting you know, other places that I won't share with you. And it changed how I thought about this whole thing. And it was a really big deal. So today is kinda like my new day one. I haven't had any issues. And it's been cool to have the options to use it both ways. My original thought going to this was, I was gonna have to change what I wanted to do to suit the iPad. But now I'm kinda realizing that the iPad can kinda suit what it does for me. And once I made that shift and started actually using the iPad, the way it was designed, the Apple Pencil came out way more. Sketching thumbnails, marking up scripts a lot, uh, taking notes during calls, but writing on glass is generally a miserable experience. Uh, your hand, my hand gets sweaty, can kind of stick to the screen and the glare, especially if you're outside, it makes it really hard to kind of clearly see what you're doing. Uh, this video is sponsored by Paperlike and I've talked with them for years and I'm generally glad they reached out because a paper like three screen protector fixes 100% of those things. So it uses this nano dot surface technology. It's basically a micro texture. It makes it feel more like you're writing on real paper. But it feels like paper, but not in a, a gimmicky kind of way. It actually really does work. Uh, your pencil glides uh, and the screen clarity stays sharp. It also does not destroy your pencil tip either. There is some kind of sandpaper texture knockoffs that just shred the top of your pencil, uh, not with paper like. Installing is also really easy. They got a butterfly system that kind of keeps dust out so you don't get bubbles stuck underneath. There's a tool helps you kind of keep everything in the lines. It took like five minutes to install. Uh, it will come with two in the box also. When you put it on, you can see that it's quality too. It was designed in Germany. It's made in Switzerland. If you're using an Apple Pencil, just get one from day one. It solves a lot of the problems with the iPad. You don't have to shell out an extra like 700 bucks to get the nano texture iPad. You can put this on. It does the job of a screen protector. It does the job of feeling like paper. It looks premium. I think it makes the iPad screen look better. I think it's awesome. If you have an iPad, any iPad, this should be the first accessory that you buy. And if you wanna pick one up, I got the link for you down below. So like thinking about the iPad, I had to just completely change how I looked at it. And it started with changing like my workflow. Uh, and I probably should have done this from the beginning, but I switched from Chrome to Safari. And I've been kind of resisting that because all of my extensions and bookmarks were in Chrome. Safari on the iPad, it's probably no surprise to you, is really good uh, with the new windowed stuff. And actually web apps on Safari were like most of the time easier to use and better than the native apps, especially the Google Docs. And it turns out, Again, surprise to me uh, that a lot of companies optimize their web apps for desktop browsers and they just work better on the iPad uh, than apps designed for touch first interfaces. So there you go. I started using the touch screen more, uh, even with the keyboard attached. I stopped trying to make the iPad replicate my Mac setup and just like let it be what it is. Um, I added my iCloud desktop folder to the dock. That was a game changer. You can do that now. And when you tap it, everything fans out like a Mac, you can see all your files. And that one feature completely changed how I thought about file management on the iPad. Should have existed five years ago, but it's here now and it's great. I started using the new windowed system instead of fighting it. But it works like windowed apps. Uh, hover over green, get the options to split the screen different ways, or just grab a window with your finger and flick it to the side. The gesture controls started making sense to me once I stopped trying to use the mouse for absolutely everything. And I know a lot of you are probably saying, yeah, of course, but like, I never used an iPad for this before. I just watched Netflix or the Lakers games on it. So this was a huge learning curve. And this is a probably niche thing, but per app microphone management, which I know sounds boring until you need it. So recording a voice memo with my HyperX mic, while Safari uses the built-in mic for a reference track that I was listening to. And before iPad OS 26, you plug in a mic 
and just kind of like pray the right app picked it up. A lot of this stuff might be obvious to people who've been using iPads like this way for years. But again, I never tried to use an iPad like a laptop before. So discovering all these new features felt awesome to me. Like I was kind of discovering something new. I got really into it. Once I stopped fighting the iPad, something else became very clear. That I was not going to replace my MacBook Air. Uh, when I need to batch export 50 files with specific naming conventions, I'm going for my Mac. When I'm managing complex project files across multiple drives, I'm on my Mac. When I'm on a tight deadline and just need muscle memory to take over, I'm on my Mac. The iPad can technically do all of that stuff. My brain is still wired for the Mac workflow. You know, 15 odd years of muscle memory does not disappear in 10 days. But also, maybe that's okay. Maybe the iPad doesn't have to replace anything. I kind of started thinking about it like an external monitor. Does it replace your laptop? No. Does it make your laptop way more useful? A hundred percent. And that's what my iPad became. My 11 inch iPad lived on the couch. Now this 13 inch sits on my desk next to my Mac, at least during the day anyway. And today it comes back to me to the couch. But if an idea hits, or I want to mark up a PDF real quick, I don't have to get up and walk back to my desk. The 11 inch could do that too, but everything that I do on the couch is actually connected to what I was working on on my desk. And that's the huge difference. And like to kind of bring this all together, the iPad to me is never going to replace a laptop, but I now view it in such a complimentary light to a laptop that it's changed the way that I've used both. So if I have to pick one to get desktop work done, yes, I'm still gonna go for my Mac. But the way I use the iPad now has changed and I can use it for desktop tasks inside of what it can do. And when I stop trying to make it a laptop and let it just be a really kick-ass iPad, that changed what I thought of it and what it can do. So I'm keeping it. I'm trading in the 11 inch. I did not see that one coming. Were there frustrations? Absolutely. The dock disappearing, you don't want it to, is annoying. Some apps still feel like stretched iPhone apps. And there is a ginormous learning curve with the new windowed system if you're used to the old split view or slide over, uh, which Apple is bringing back. So that's nice, you have the option to use that again. But the big one, I spent $2,456.39 on an iPad. The Magic Keyboard alone is 329 bucks. Apple Pencil Pro is 129 bucks. And want nano texture glass? Uh, can't get it unless you buy a terabyte or more of storage and send an extra 700 bucks just to unlock that option. The math does not math and gets out of control fast. But here's the thing, you don't need an iPad Pro to get most of all this to work that I just talked about. iPad OS 26 runs great on a regular iPad or an iPad Air, you could try this whole workflow for way less money. But here's what makes it worth it for me. The hardware is phenomenal. iPad OS 26, I think finally lives up to what the hardware can do. And I'm not trying to force it to be something that it's not anymore. It is the best iPad Apple's ever made because it's finally comfortable being an iPad, if that makes sense. If you've tried this and worked for you and failed spectacularly, let me know in the comments. It's one of those things you really have to force yourself to try. I have a newfound respect for my iPad. And if you give it a shot and use it the right way, I think you might too.